coming up on The Sporting Chef. Today, I'm cooking fish and game with super high heat. Tommy Gomes breaks down and cooks up a fish with spots. Chef Chris Logan will set his food on fire. C-Dub shows you how to cure an ailing Dutch oven. And Buddy takes a shot at a gator jar. What do you get when you find the best fish and game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, The Sporting Chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Today on The Sporting Chef, I'm gonna show you how to cook with high heat. High heat is a great way to cook more delicate items like, like fish, for instance. This is fresh Alaskan coho salmon. This is an elk loin, an elk backstrap. If you have a tougher cut of meat, like let's say a venison neck roast or shoulder roast, that's what you cook slowly. Duck legs, goose legs, tougher cuts of meat, more sinewy cuts of meat, Cook it slowly so that it breaks down those muscle fibers and becomes more tender. I'm gonna cook at about six to 700 degrees today in a pizza oven. This is a Camp Chef pizza oven. Now, before I get started, while the pizza oven is warming up, I wanna check in with Tommy Gomes, San Diego's favorite fishmonger. Tommy has a very unusual fish that he's gonna break down today. Tommy. Leopard shark. We're gonna go ahead and bring it over to a filet. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna butcher it up. We're gonna give it a toss on the grill. You can see him removing the the fins here. This animal was harvested strictly for this show. Those fins are not going to be resold. Conservation is a must in and around California local waters. Gonna cut the tails off. You watch him. He's gonna cut that head off up above by the pectoral fin. He's gonna make a clean cut all the way through. Gonna whack on it. Put some slime on the cameraman for us. Let him know he's in a real fish market. And he's just gonna run that blade right down the side of that fish, right to the tail. Removing the belly liner. He's just gonna make a trim on it. And just cut that right out like you would a yellowtail. What you do end up with is a beautiful piece of white meat full of flavor and we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna cook it up on the grill over here. You see the other side, you see that dark bloodline there? So we're gonna trim some of this. We're gonna cut that bloodline right out. So we're gonna take that just like that and we're gonna go ahead and cook it up for you. White, flaky, loined out. Beautiful piece of meat. Nice product. Now later on in the show, Tommy's going to actually cook the leopard shark fillet, so you want to stick around for that. I'm ready for my salmon, but I gotta tell you a little bit about sealing your fish. Very often I see fish floating in zipper lock bags or a plastic container in the refrigerator, and they're floating around in fish juices. I don't care how dry the fish was going in, once it's thawed, you get these offending fish juices. See all this? See all this? If you want if your you fish want this floating float in this, it's gonna taste bad. It's imperative that you get your fish as dry as possible. And this will also prolong the life of your fish. So you wrap it up in two ply paper towels and you just press it and press it and press it until it's really, really dry. And use a good two ply paper towel because if you use a cheap paper towel, it's kind of like toilet paper and it sticks to the fish and then that's just kind of a pain and you're gonna say, Scott, you steered me wrong on that whole fish thing. So it's dry. I have two cedar planks, the smaller one for the salmon, the bigger one for that elk backstrap. First of all, you need to make sure that you soak them for at least a half hour, otherwise they're likely to catch on fire. And if they do catch on fire, you know, that's okay, it's just a little flavor, but you may end up burning yourself. Onto the plank goes the salmon. I'm gonna season it with some high mountain salmon rub. And I'm also gonna give it a big squeeze of lemon. This is a Meyer lemon, which is a little bit sweeter than your average lemon. Meyer lemon on top. And then I'm going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil. Let that sit for a minute. That one's going to be ready. Next plank has that elk backstrap. Hopefully you'll notice that this elk backstrap has been trimmed. There's a little oxidation here. A little color change doesn't hurt it. 
but it's been trimmed. There's very little silver skin, very little gristle on that. Olive oil. I'm going to rub that in. And once again, the reason that I want to cook this at high heat in the pizza oven is because this is a piece of meat that doesn't need to be broken down, that doesn't need to be tenderized. You can actually slice this thin and eat it rare. You can make an elk backstrap carpaccio that isn't cooked at all. I have some high mountain venison rub. And what's cool about the high mountain rubs is that it's not just a bunch of salt with some color thrown in. It actually has a whole bunch of flavor. Make sure you go to highmountainjerky.com and they have everything to make your fish and game taste better. So I got salmon, I've got elk backstrap, I've got a screaming hot pizza oven. We're just getting started. Stick around, there's more to come on The Sporting Show. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. Cooking with high heat in the Camp Chef pizza oven. The salmon is ready to go. It's going in first, on the plank, onto the stone. Next up is that elk backstrap seasoned with the high mountain venison rub. That's going in there. Once again, high heat, quick cooking for cuts that don't require a lot of low temperature, slow cooking to break down. And now I've got one of our sporting chef pros, Chef Christopher Logan of San Diego, who's no stranger to fast, high heat cooking. What he's doing with grouper requires no special equipment except maybe a fire extinguisher. Yeah, you're never going to believe what we got today. We've got Baja grouper. It's a, uh, it's a fleshy fish, very similar to uh, bass. You know, uh, 9 out of 10 people really can't tell a difference. Uh, <laughs> it really is Baja grouper, just kidding. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is we're going to pan, so I tell you this. I'm going to use a little uh, Hawaiian sea salt, Aliea, my preference, and uh, the reason for that, I just like it. I'm also going to use a little togarashi spice. Togarashi spice is a uh, Japanese uh, ground red pepper. This uh, variety that I'm using has a little bit of sesame seed, a little bit of uh, lemon peel, and orange peel, and seaweed. Hot pan, neutral oil, the Baja grouper. Anyhow, hot pan. What you want to do is you, when you hit a saute pan, you always put stuff away. And the reason for that is you tilt it towards you, chances are you're going to be burning yourself, you know, your insurance. It's just not worth it. So hot pan always away, hands go up, plate goes down. You want to sear, sear all the juices going into uh, one side, turn it over, back into the center, medium rare. The reason for that, you never want to overcook a great piece of fish. For this preparation, I'm going to use a little uh, julienne. I've got uh, yellow squash and zucchini here. I'm going to put that on the side. And a little bit of rainbow carrot. This is an heirloom carrot. We've got uh, yellow, we've got white, and we've got purple. It's kind of like a beet color. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of basil. Okay, cool. So what I've got is I've got the uh, heirloom carrot and the julienne uh, squash and zucchini with the basil. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of shaved garlic. And then for the grouper itself, I'm going to finish that with some caper and a lemon vinaigrette. As with all fish, I like to cook them about medium rare. If you like your fish a little, uh, you know, cooked more, you ask somebody else to do it for you. But if you come over to my house, this is what you're going to get, medium rare. We're going to put that on top, and as I said, I'm going to finish it with a little bit of caper, a little bit of lemon vinaigrette, and that's going to be on top of the grouper as well. The caper is a uh, berry from God. It's a little salty, they're brined, uh, usually in a brine. Okay, here we go, the flame just for you. The brines to preserve the caper, which is a berry, it grows on a tree. We're just going to put that on either side. Usually found in a lot of Mediterranean cooking, or my cooking. I like capers. 
They're tart, they're salty, they're sweet, just like you, Scott. Grouper! Aw, oh, shucks. Thanks, Chris. Now, over here in the pizza oven, I've got on the plank salmon on this side. The salmon's going to come out first. Then I have the elk loin, and I just fired up a cast iron skillet that's going to have some butternut squash, mushrooms, red onion, fresh thyme. I'll finish it with a little bit of butter. That's going to go with that elk loin. Now, if you don't know much about cast iron cookware, it's my all-time favorite. You can't hurt cast iron. And when we come back, I've got C-Dub, the man, the legend, who's going to show you the easy way to season your cast iron cookware. And of course, we got a whole lot more. And don't forget, there's going to be a little buddy here, too. One of the locals had been seeing some 200 pounders roll. I don't know if that one, if this one here is that big or not, but it's a good fish. Welcome back to Sporting Chef, cooking with high heat. Salmon, elk, back strap. The salmon's done, it's gonna be done first. Good smoky cedar plank flavor. The elk wine's gonna take a little bit longer. This is cast iron. I got a guy who's gonna show you how to season a cast iron pan easy way. Okay, Scott, this is how you cure cast iron. It's a quick, simple process. We're going to use a product that I prefer, and that is uh, Camp Chef's cast iron conditioner. And all I'm going to do is I want a very thin film of oil, so rather than squirt it on my iron, I'm going to put a little bit on my rag, and I want just a thin layer on my cast iron. I'm going to do that inside and out and then I'm going to heat this up in a gas grill or with charcoal for about an hour at 450 degrees and this thing will be brand new and ready to use. All right, salmon's done. Elk loin is done. Remember that leopard shark that Tommy Gomes broke down? Well, as it turns out, he can cook too. Leopard shark we stripped out. Here's the loin. Beautiful white piece of meat. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it here on the cutting board. And I'm going to cut on the bias. Just like this. It's a beautiful piece of fish. I'm going to lay it down. Turn up our heat a little bit. Cast iron griddle. Camp Chef Magic. Got four nice, beautiful pieces. Just put a little bit of olive oil on here. Squeeze that lemon. Gonna cook it off. So again, the leopard shark is not a targeted species. The leopard shark is something that is a bycatch. They're inside the surf line and lagoons here in Southern California during the spawn. They're more for when you're snorkeling, they're swimming nice and slow, they're not aggressive, they don't bite you, they don't attack. They're a beautiful animal. You can see how it plumps up, shrinks and plumps up. Shark has very little fat in it, but it will sear up nice. Uh, it's an underutilized fish. One of the things that I like to talk about is the conservation of shark. On a global scale, we're harvesting these animals, cutting the fins off and throwing them away, which is bad, bad, bad. For me, I don't see any reason to kill an animal unless you're going to eat it. So we can take a little spoon here and flip it over. You can see the colorization, the caramelization, if you will, starting to firm up. Look at that, beautiful. Take a little trail dust from high mountain seasoning. One thing that's great about this seasoning is the holes are big so they don't clump up. Sometimes you get that seasoning, it's got those little holes in it. It's like, what do you do with that stuff? So go ahead, we're gonna put this coloring on there. And there we go. We're gonna flip this finish off. 
Put a little bit more seasoning on there, a little more oil, a little more lemon on there. Get that flavor going. That's what you got. Beautiful leopard shark. You can see the colorization of the, the uh, seasoning start to blend in, bringing up the juices. So you get a good angle on that. Look at that. That's a great piece of fish right there. Absolutely. Remember, the more you use your Camp Chef griddle, the more seasoned it's going to be. I like to put the oil on there, a little bit of rock salt, rub it in there, get it all going. Here's what you got. There's a beautiful piece of fish. We're just going to plate that up nice and easy. And there you go. Leopard shark, local species, not targeted, harvested, cut, grilled, prepped for your enjoyment right here, Camp Chef. Now it's time to check the elk backstrap, the elk loin. This is a short loin here. That's beautiful color in the center. I love this piece of meat. High heat, seared on the outside, and of course you've heard searing it on the outside seals in the juices. That's hogwash, but it does make it taste better. And now it's time for Buddy T. Now Buddy's after alligator gar, which is a big toothy creature that's not known as a great eating fish. But first, Buddy must dispatch the gar. Well that did it. That takes a bite out of him. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to fry up some of this gar fish. I like to soak it in buttermilk or either egg and milk combination. Couldn't see wasting all that fluid so one thing that I discovered about 30 years ago is you could take your french fries and mix it up in that and you go and put that in one third each flour, cornmeal and breadcrumbs then to make it a little extra special sprinkle some panko breadcrumbs in there and let that coat those potatoes it's going to make a battered fry that you're really going to like I don't put any seasoning in any of this because I think the best thing to do with your seasoning is when it comes out of that oil hot Put that seasoning on there, and then them oils from that seasoning and that salt's going to melt. It'll be all on the outside or whatever it is you just got through cooking instead of melting in that grease on your stove. By the way, you can make up a batch of these potatoes, put them on a cookie sheet, freeze them, put them in a plastic bag, pull it out. So if you want some battered fries and uh, you're not making any gar fish, it'll be ready to go. A lot going on today on the Sporting Chef. These are the mushrooms, butternut squash, and onions into the skillet. Butternut squash first because it's going to take the longest to cook. I've got whole mushrooms. I like to eat the stems, so I've got the stems on there. There's red onion, butter, garlic, and a little bit of fresh thyme. On top of that, I've got this perfectly cooked elk backstrap. You can see it's still nice and juicy. Pretty, pretty colors there. Here's a little fresh thyme just to add a little color to the dish. Over here on the salmon, just a couple of little different colored tomatoes, some fresh basil. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little more of the High Mountain salmon rub. And I have some red and green jalapeno peppers, a big squeeze of mired lemon on top. If you add fresh lemon or lime juice right when you serve fish, it livens up the flavors. It's like a natural MSG, stimulates the palate, makes fish taste good. This guy is ready to go. It just needs a little shake of the High Mountain Venison Rub. Special thanks today to all my Sporting Chef pros, starting with Tommy Gomes from Catalina Offshore Products in San Diego, also from San Diego, Chef Christopher Logan, who can set anything on fire. Then there's C-Dub, who can do anything with cast iron. And of course, who can forget Buddy? You know, you can find out more about what you saw on Sporting Chef today and a whole lot more. We've got videos, recipes, cookbooks, and some great information about all the people you see on the show. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching Sporting Chef. <laughs>